I bet it's friendly. Believe it or not, some of them are, Larry. I wonder if these are the friendly ones. Richard Stark had come back to his hometown to lead his brothers on a march. The following day, he and the black workers of Oroville were going to walk to the gates of the mill. There, they'd present a list of grievances to the mill owners. If the grievances were not met, the black mill hands were going to strike. And that strike would shut down the mill, but good. Three years ago, Stark's brother was gunned down in this town. The killer was never found. Tomorrow morning at nine, Richard Stark would stand a good chance of meeting death the same way. Richard Stark was a crusader, a shining symbol to his people, to all people. He wasn't nationally prominent yet. He would be one day, unless a bullet put an end to his career. The man said my job was to make sure that that didn't happen. Hi. Howdy. I have a reservation. My name is Montgomery Nash. Yes, sir, Mr. Nash. Bring your luggage in the car, sir? This is it. Plan on staying long? Just overnight. You're a long way from home, sir. Tom Schaefer. Run the local paper here in town. Monday Nash. I've heard of you before, Mr. Nash. Oh, uh, will you excuse me, please? Nice to have you aboard. Something tells me if we had a game of tag today, you'd win. Tom, how are you, man? Fine. <laughs> hey, I'd like you to meet my colleagues, uh, Carl, this is uh, Larry James, and Tripoli. Tom here's an old friend of mine. We, uh, you know, he's been around this town for a long while, you know? He used to play tag right outside this hotel. Whenever he didn't want to get caught, he'd run inside because he knew we couldn't come in after him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think that we'd be standing here side by side, equal like? I've always known that, Tom. Always. How about a drink? Only if you'll all be my guests. Larry James. I didn't know him. I'd been briefed on Dr. Stark's regular bodyguard. It wasn't Larry James. I wondered who James was. I also wondered about his two buddies. To our loved ones, your brother Milford and my little sister Ellie May. Milford and Ellie May. Oh, Mr. Nash. Mr. Nash, would you care to join us? Beverly, Carl, James, Dr. Stark. Mr. Nash, you just came into town. I assume he's here on your account, Bob. It's a pleasure, Dr. Scott. I've been an admirer of yours for a long time, and your brother's too, when he was alive. You know, the world would be a better place to live if there were more people like you around. People like me? Yes, those who also believe in nonviolence. Oh, but it's change I believe in. And what's the difference? Well, I believe in nonviolence, but change is what I'm after. Change is the goal. Nonviolence is the method. Because to seek change in any other way, I believe, will only end in mass bloodshed, which nobody really wants. 
But as it is, there are those who would have their violence anyway. You take a look at this. When did you get this? It was waiting for me at the desk when I checked in. Miss Nash, Chef Evans wanted some money, and I talked to him. Why? Around here, you don't ask why, baby. You just go. Can I keep this? Uh, sweetheart, fix me a double scotch on the rocks and a tall glass. I'll be right back. You're sure you'll be back? Well, if I'm not, just have it sent up to my room. I won't keep you long, Mr. Nash. I appreciate you coming up. Well, what can I do for you? Why don't we sit down? Tomorrow morning, when that black man in there marches up to the mill gate, there's going to be a lot of people watching. My job is to protect him and them. If I have to call it an unlawful assembly to do it, I will. Now, what you're saying is you might stop the march. What I'm saying is, if I have to do it, I want Washington to know why, not just how. Any ideas? Not a one. Except it could have come from the same man who killed Stark's brother. Maybe he's still in Oroville. Maybe. Keeping Mr. Nash here for any special reason, Ace? Yes, sir. I am denying him his civil rights. Tom, ever since you came back from that fancy northern college of yours, you're just bound to prove the rest of us here are a bunch of redneck racists. Now, Mr. Nash and I were just having a friendly talk. Is that right, Mr. Nash? Is that right? Come in and join us when you're through. Four years ago, I stopped his sister for speaking. She'd been drinking a little, but I didn't see any point in running her in. I dressed her down and let her go. Two hours later, she drove her car off a 200-foot drop. Suicide? I think so. They found out she was going to have a baby. Who did it? Could have been any one of a dozen boys in town. Although you don't dare tell that to Tom. Anyway, he never forgave me. Thinks I should have taken her in. Well, thanks for hearing me out. Give this back to start. Maybe it might make him think twice. Nice meeting you, Mr. Nash. Uh, you won't forget what I told you. You hear? Something gave me the feeling that Larry James didn't like me. But that was okay with me. I didn't like him either. I'd seen him someplace before. I realize that now. But where? and uh, get me a make on a fellow by the name of Larry James. Harry James? No, 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 honey, not... <laughs> no, not Harry James, Larry James. Uh, he's Dr. Larry. S no, honey, he's 
Dr. Stark's bodyguard. That's right. Yeah, get me a mate and find out who his last bodyguard was. That's right. Yeah, well, yeah, it's the friendliest town in the South. That's right. Yeah, call you later. quite a trip. Wow. I don't understand why the drug culture is so hip on tripping out. Phew. It's scary. But tripping out is not my problem. Getting out is. the two goons. James hadn't trained them too well. But they were young and maybe they'd learn. That is, after they got out of the pokey. I dumped them in the back of their pickup truck and headed back to town. Before I dropped the two heavies off on the sheriff, I called my service. What Molly said about Larry James gave me a joke. At one time, he'd been the leader of a rival organization whose policies were opposed to Stark's. A year ago, he teamed up with Stark, and Stark had come to trust him. Always unstable, James must have seen his chance to take over Stark's organization. 24 hours ago, Stark's regular bodyguard was taken ill. <laughs> Acute indigestion, they called it. And James moved two of his men into the job. A charge of kidnapping and assault was enough to hold James's two muscle men. Then the sheriff and Tolliver went over to the hotel to take care of Mr. James. 
You want money now, George? I hope so. Why? Because nobody seems to be who they really are. A southern sheriff who is genuinely concerned for my safety and a brother who's out to kill me. Nothing seems to make any sense anymore. I'm beginning to wonder whether I'm really myself. Uh, if I were you, Dr. Stark, I'd uh, get a good night's sleep. And not wonder about tomorrow. We've got uh, James, but that doesn't mean you'll be safe at the march. Why not? Because I don't think James sent you that threatening note. And whoever did is still in town. Listen, you better take good care of him. You take good care of him, Mr. Nash. The scent of magnolia was heavy in the air, lying there outside like some big, sweet woman. I thought about going down to the bar for a little diversion. Then I changed my mind. The man said he liked his drink strong. And pure. I bet you could melt all them little ice cubes just like that. Did you feel that way when you saw me downstairs? Mm-hmm. And uh, before you knocked on my door? Mm-hmm. Then why did you come up here? Hmm? Come on, baby. <laughs> Who paid you? Hmm? Who paid you? Who paid you? Oh, come on. Tom Schaefer. Tom Schaefer. What do you know? Come on, sweetheart. All right, come on now. Where would Shaver take Dr. Stark? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where was Stark's brother killed? The roundhouse. I'd been stupid, figuring I had it made. Hmm. I had the James boys under wraps and thought I didn't have to worry about anything until the next day when Stark took his long walk. Schaefer had outfoxed everything. He'd probably gotten Stark to leave the hotel by giving him some story about a last-minute conciliation on the part of the mill management. Trusting him, Stark left, the deputy with him. I didn't know whether the deputy was in on it. I had the feeling he wasn't. My feeling was right. Don't tell me that, Mr. Hypocrite. You and your brother always pretending to be my friend. Telling you the truth, Tom, neither Milford nor I ever touched your sister. I'll say one thing for you, though. You got a lot more guts than your brother ever had. Tom. So I'm going to give you a chance to die with the truth on your lips. Now, you just admit it. You and your brother took advantage of Ellie Mae. You brought her over to your house and you did her in. Not true. You rotten liar. She told me all about it. She described it to me. Well, there must have been things she did with others. It wasn't with me and it wasn't with my brother. Then why would she say it was you two? Because your sister hated you, Tom, and you know it. 
Now, what better way was there for her to torture you but to tell you she was fooling around with a couple of black boys, huh? And what has that got to do with it? Think, man, doesn't it? Ellie Mae was a sick girl. She used to come over to our house all the time to cry on my mother's shoulder. She must have told my mother some of the things she told you. Because Milford and I, before we were even out of our teens, our mother made us promise never to let ourselves be alone with Ellie Mae. We never broke that promise. You knew a lot of the guys she went out with, John. Well, why didn't you shoot them? The next one goes straight into your brain, so you got about five seconds, boy. Run! Start! Take his march all the way to the gate and even beyond it. And so would the people he was making it with. We all knew that. And out of all the violence and the tragedy, something better would come. We'd learn to live with each other in peace. Any other way just isn't good enough. <laughs> 